Well, we are in challenging times in Oregon, and we are grappling with the reality of a difficult budget year, and these challenges underscore the need for alignment around state priorities that move us forward together. On the screen, you're seeing the faces of youth and families from nonprofits across the state that are doing great work in their communities. I include them there today to remind us that the, about the budget choices that we have before us have real life impacts on real people. In 2013, Oregon Values and Beliefs Project conducted a survey to identify our state's top values, and not surprisingly, education and health and wellness ranked numbers one and two, respectively. Both these values are critical for reaching a changing Oregon population. And Oregon's Latino community is at the forefront of this change. Latinos represent the fastest growing community in the state. Between 2000 and 2010, the Latino population more than doubled, growing by 63%, and our community is young. Nearly one in four students under five are Latino and also make up 21% of students in Oregon's K-12 schools. And nationally, nearly six in 10 Latinos are millennials or younger. And while this is great news for diversity, it is, a really it is really challenging in a state that still has huge educational disparities for children and families of color across several indicators. When you look at this data as often as I do, you realize that healthy starts in life and education are among the greatest investment areas for the greatest and longest term impact. And these things should be among the top priorities for Oregon. Remember, it's what we said we value. Kindergarten readiness, school attendance, parent and family engagement, and access to community supports are key strategies that help us to get there. And the tremendous opportunity that comes with the passage of Measure 98, middle and high school completion, college exposure and counseling, and opportunities for accelerated learning and dual credit, and also career and technical education, are all critical components of this needed change. Our state's colleges and universities also play a critical role in ensuring a prepared workforce. Rising tuition, coupled with public underinvestment, continues to make college increasingly unaffordable for students and makes retention more difficult, especially for students of color and first-generation students. We are setting students up to fail if they leave college before completing, saddled with student debt and with no degree. College students should be able to count on supports to keep them enrolled, supported, and graduating. As nonprofit leaders, our work is on the community's front line. And while we may have made tremendous progress together toward ending poverty and promoting education, the need still continues to grow. We need critical and stable investments that reflect our Oregon values. Remaining in our ideological corners will have vast and dire consequences, not just for children and families in these photos, but for all of us. Each year, another generation of Oregon youth step into their futures with less support and fewer life options than they deserve to have. And our safety net of nonprofits cannot solely fill this gap, nor can any one sector. We need the alignment and investment of leadership in the public and private sectors, elected officials, philanthropy, and nonprofit communities, all collaboratively problem solving together in order to move our state forward. We are the ones that can place high value on reaching underserved populations, on disrupting systems that create and sustain poverty, and providing access to opportunity so that children and families can thrive. This is the Oregon way, a state that chooses to leave no one behind. Marion Wright Edelman wrote that children can't be what they can't see. She was referring to the idea that all children should be exposed to images and literature that reflect the true diversity of this nation and this world. More than ever, this idea is important for Oregon's future. Our youth need to see themselves at the front of classrooms, starting businesses, and leading government agencies and corporations. Indeed, they need to see themselves in this room and on this stage. And this all starts with us. In this time of competing ideas, let's make the choice to keep students and families at the center, keep pre-K programs and high school completion at the center, keep opportunities to graduate and go to college at the center, and keep education institutions that are teaching and preparing our future leaders at the center. All these things contribute to stronger children and families and to a stronger and thriving Oregon. Thank you, Patrick.
thank you, carmen.